Shabbat shalom, everybody. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. We hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I'm your brother, Zakwa. This is your brother, Kasafo. Uh, we have a wonderful, exciting lesson for everybody today. Um, it is a recap on one of the lessons we did prior. There were some things that we needed to change in the lesson. Um, so we hope everybody, if you have seen this lesson, please just bear with us. And um, hopefully there's some new information um, for you. But we did want to go back into the tribe of Issachar. Um, identifying the tribe of Issachar, and we also are going to go back into the tribe of Levi as well. Uh, Brother Kalta, for you have anything? Um, you can get the PDF notes for this lesson on the website on the Doctrine video notes. You just find the um, thumbnail for the lesson and the PDF download tab will be right there beside it. Um, other than that, this lesson should be more clear than the former lesson. So hopefully it's helpful for identifying the tribes. All right, we're good to go? Or... Yep, we're good to go. The 10 tribes who dominantly went to the region of Austria, which are the islands of the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Americas, and the Caribbean Islands. They are known as the Aboriginals, indigenous, or natives of those lands and islands. The 10 tribes are scattered across the world presently today. So they are not regulated to being in one specific area of the world right now. The 10 tribes consist of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Issachar, Zebulon, Gad, Asher, Ephraim, and Manasseh. In one's personal search for one's tribal origin, one must start by prayer because we have to make our request known with supplication. Then one has to look at our father's lineage to know our tribes according to the scriptures like Numbers chapter 1, verse 2 and 22. If one's ancestry stands back to the slaves, the Negroes, Bantus of Africa, or the cargo slave ships, then one is more than likely from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, with a slim chance of Simeon or the ten tribes. On the other hand, if one's ancestry stems back to any Native American or indigenous people of the Americas or Caribbean or Africa, Aboriginals and indigenous tribes of the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean, then you're from the 10 tribes of Israel. This series of lessons are to identify the 12 tribes individually according to the spiritual indicators that the patriarchs documented their children would face. We know the signs and curses that help identify the children of Israel around the world today. Yet, through the spiritual indicators in the admonitions of the patriarchs, one can identify which specific tribe a person of the house of Israel originates from. It's by the spirit Ahaya has given the grace to truly identify which tribe people actually come from, since it is she that brings things to remembrance, searcheth all things, and we know we cannot know anything except the spirit reveal them. Can you read John chapter 16, verse 13? And Chapter 14, verse 26, please. John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when she, the spirit of truth, hath come, she will guide you into all truth. For she shall not speak of herself, but whatsoever she shall hear, that shall she speak, and she will show you things to come. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, she shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So she knows she'll guide you to all truth. So she'll help her reveal who you are. And also she'll bring to remembrance your tribe and understanding not only who you are, but what it takes for you to overcome what you're facing. The Lord willing today that help the children of Issachar. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, please? Mm -hmm. But Elohim hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Elohim. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of Elohim knoweth no man, but the Spirit of Elohim. So though we may not remember who we are, or one may be trying to figure it out, the Spirit knows exactly who we are. And may I be gracious to cause it to reveal it unto the, the children of Issachar today. So in identifying the tribe of Issachar, Jacob testified of what will befall the posterity of Issachar in the latter times. Can you read Genesis chapter 49, verse 1 and verse 14, please? 
And Jacob called unto his sons, and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Uh, Genesis 49 and 14. Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two burdens. This showed that Issachar bowed himself down to labor, and as a donkey, they are endowed with strength to do labor, and this trait has not left his children. They are most prosperous at laboring. No one outworks them in hard labor, especially husbandry. Can you read Testament of Issachar, chapter 5, verse 3, please? And 3 to 6, actually, please. Bow down your, bow down your back unto husbandry, and toil and labors in all manner of husbandry, Offering gifts to the Lord with thanksgiving. For with the first fruits of the earth will Ahia bless you, even as he blessed all the saints from Abel even unto now. For no other portion is given to you than of the fatness of the earth, whose fruits are raised by toil. For our father Jacob blessed me with blessings of the earth and of the first fruits. Issachar is literally blessed by the earth in the Testament of Judah, chapter 24, verse 2. So they have a connection with the land. Can you read that, please? And Ahia blessed Levi, and the angel of the presence, me, and the powers of glory, Simeon, the heaven, Reuben, the earth, Issachar. This is why they do so well in all manner of horticulture, farming of all kinds. Let's see what would befall them in the last days to know who they are today. Genesis chapter 49, verse 15, please. And he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Remember, this is what will befall Issachar's children in the latter days. So let's read it again, please. And he saw that rest was good. When the ten tribes went to Osirath, this showed that there will come a time in the latter days that Issachar's children will see that rest was good and it would be good to work for themselves and rest instead of working for others. All right? And the land that it was pleasant. The land he took in Osirath is a pleasant land and fruitful with good temperatures year round. Continue, please. And bow the shoulder to bear. So he endeavored to start working and building for himself in this pleasant land that he came to so that he could rest. And when he endeavored to do so, what would happen? Go on, please. And became a servant unto tribute. And as soon as he set his hand to the work, they were conquered and became servants unto tribute before they could complete the work. Being servants unto tribute means the Issacharites work for low wages. So though hard working, they would always be underpaid. Now today you can find Easter Christ on farms throughout America and Central America, working the land for cheap labor. Let's see what Moses spake of them. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 18, please? And of Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. In his tents show that they're simplistic people, and they still are so this day. For those of you who are familiar with the old Mexican culture, to this day, they are very family-oriented, focusing on work and family and rest when they have their fiestas. Now, from the words of Jacob and Moses, it's not hard to tell what people this could be. They are more hard-working at laborious jobs than anyone else, especially good at work in the farms, and they work for low wages. Their culture is simplistic, being content with a work and family. And there are people who came to this pleasant land in America, but were conquered as soon as they tried to establish something of their own. Now they're being exploited for low wages and the benefits of their land is tributary unto others. And wherever they are in these days, you can easily find them doing husbandry for low wages. If you could take a good guess at who they may be, so what would one say based on knowing how the different people are today in the world? I'll give you a chance if you want to. You know, you already I said it. I kind of gave right? it away. I messed it up already. Ah. You already said the answer. Yeah, I messed it yeah, up. I'm sitting there like you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> ah, my bad. <laughs> Can we jump into one testament of Issachar, please? Starting at chapter one through chapter two, please. The copy of the words of Issachar, for he called his sons and said to them, Hearken, my children, to Issachar your father. Give ear to the words of him who is beloved of the Lord. I was born the fifth son of Jacob, by way of hire for the mandrakes. For Reuben my brother brought in mandrakes from the field, and Rachel met, me, met him and took them. And Reuben wept, and at his voice Leah my mother came forth. Now these mandrakes were sweet-smelling apples, which were produced in the land of Haran, below the ravine of water. And Rachel said, I will not give them to thee, but they shall be to me instead of children, for the Lord hath despised me, and I have not borne children to Jacob. Now there were two apples, and Leah said to Rachel, Let it suffice thee that thou hast taken my husband, but thou take these also? And Rachel said to her, Thou shalt have Jacob this night for the mandrakes of thy son. And Leah said to her, Jacob is mine, for I am the wife of his youth. But Rachel said, Boast not, and vault not thyself, for he espoused me before thee, and for my sake he served our father fourteen years, and had not craft increased in the earth, and the wickedness of men prospered, thou wouldest not now see the face of Jacob. Then appeared to Jacob an angel of the Lord, saying, Two children shall Rachel bear, and as much as she hath refused company with her husband, and have chosen continency. And had not Leah my mother paid the two apples for the sake of his company, she would have borne eight sons. For this reason she bare six. And Rachel bare the two. For on a cord of the mandrakes the Lord visited her. For he knew that for the sake of children she wished to accompany with Jacob, and not for lust of pleasure. For on the morrow also she again gave up Jacob, because of the mandrakes. Therefore the Lord hearkened to Rachel, for though she desired them, she eat them not, but offered them in the house of the Lord, presenting them to the priest of the Most High, who was at that time. So there is some history on how his birth came about. Now let's learn about him, because this lesson is not only good for his children, but for us all, so that we may all learn how to be beloved of Ahaya as he is. Can you go into chapter three, please? When therefore I grew up, my children, I walked in uprightness of heart, and I became an husbandman for my father and my brethren, and I brought in fruits from the field according to their season. It's a trait of Issachar to be great workers of the ground, and they are skilled at bringing in good harvest year round. And that's still common among them today. Zachwa and I, we work in the trucking industry and Zachwa can attest the majority of the time you go to the farm, you will see Issachar right there working the land for cheap labor, being servants on the tribute. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere. Right. <laughs> it's like everywhere you go, they end up being All right. there. <laughs> All right, All right. Uh, continue please. And my father blessed me, for he saw that I walked in rectitude before him. Rectitude means morally correct behavior or thinking, righteousness. So Issachar walked in uprightness of heart and rectitude and loved almsgiving, expending his labors in the field for others to eat of. This brought a blessing on him. This manner of living will help his children prosper again in righteousness. Let's see the characteristics of being upright in heart. Can you continue, please? And I was not a busybody in my doings. He wasn't a meddler in others' affairs. He didn't seek to know everybody's business. Continue, please. Nor envious and malicious against my neighbor. I never slandered anyone, nor did I censor the life of any man, walking as I did in singleness of eye. Issachar was upright in these things. But his children are falling away from this rectitude and they struggle with being busybodies, slanderers, and censoring the lives of others, which means they harshly critique the lives of others. They also struggle with envy and being malicious against their neighbor, which 
you can find evidence of in the illegal drug business when the Mexican cartels are known for setting each other up and robbing from one another from malice and envy, evidently. Continue, please. Therefore, when I was 19 years old, I took to myself a wife. Interestingly, they still get married young for the most part. The legal age for marriage with paternal consent in Mexico is 14 years old, and most women are married before the age of 18. Go ahead, please. For my labor wore away my strength. And I never thought upon pleasure with women, but only to my toil, sleep overcame me. Issachar wasn't a fornicator in his thoughts, lusting after women, but his children struggled with being of a lustful mind in their thoughts about pleasure with women. Continue. Can you read Matthew 5 and 28, please? Sure. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Issachar needs help with this, and for help in this area, you can see how Issachar was wholly devoted. He was devoted to his labor and in good works before his father and his labor in the field. This kept him from fornication in the mind and in act. And we have admonitions for this to overcome for our brothers of the tribe of Issachar. Testament of Reuben, chapter 4, verse 1, please. Pay no heed, therefore, my children, to the beauty of women, nor set your mind on their affairs, but walk in singleness of heart in the fear of Ahia, and expend labor on good works, and on study, and on your flocks, until Ahia give you a wife, whom he will, that ye suffer not as I did. Issachar is a testament of how these commands do deliver from fornication. Can you jump back into Testament Issachar, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, please? Therefore, when I was 19 years old, I took to myself a wife, for my labor wore away my strength, and I never thought upon pleasure with women, but owing to my toil, sleep overcame me. And my father always rejoiced in my rectitude, because I offered through the priest of the Lord all first fruits, then to my father also. His tithings were upright. Continue, please. And the Lord increased 10,000 fold his benefits in my hands. And also Jacob, my father, knew that Elohim aided my singleness. For on all the poor and oppressed, I bestowed the good things of the earth in the singleness of my heart. He also gave alms to the poor, being aided in singleness from Alahayim. Can you read the definition of singleness, please? G858, Thelotis. Um, simplicity, singleness. That's in, those are good definitions to look up for Issacharites to understand what that means and for anyone to see that characteristic and apply it to oneself. Issachar was accustomed to sharing his produce from his labor with the poor and oppressed, which was a help to keep him from sin. Can you read Tobit, chapter 4, verse 16, please? Give of thy bread to the hungry, and of thy garments to them that are naked. And according to thine abundance, give alms. And let not thine eye be envious when thou givest alms. Knowing envy takes you away. From singleness. Beware of it in your arms given there, brothers. Can you read Tobit chapter 12, verse 8 to 10, please? Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. For alms do deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. All right, verse 10. But they that sin are enemies to their own life. Notice, it takes arms with righteousness to be filled with life. Arms alone can't save anyone. And this is important for Issachar and for all people who are trying to understand ways they can be delivered from sin and enter into life. Can you read Apocalypse of Peter, chapter 12, this excerpt, please? And nearby this place of torment shall be men and women, dumb and blind whose raiment is white, they shall crowd one upon another and fall upon coals of unquenchable fire. These are they that give alms and say, we are righteous before Allah, where they have not sought after righteousness. Azrael, the angel of Allah, shall bring them forth out of this fire and establish a judgment of decision. This then is their judgment, 
a river of fire shall flow in all judgment. They that are judged shall be drawn down into the middle of the river, and Uriel shall set them there. So there we see through scripture that just giving alms doesn't actually justify us. Because there's a punishment if we give alms and don't seek after righteousness. And can we confirm this with Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 40, please? And I observed and saw men and women clothed in bright garments, having their eyes blind, placed in a pit. And I asked, Sir, who are these? And he said to me, These are the people who did alms, and knew not the Lord Elohim, for which reason they unceasingly pay the proper penalties. So we know from reading Second John, to know the Lord is to keep his commandments. So be encouraged there, brethren of the tribe of Issachar, that you actually have to keep the commandments along with your alms given, so they will be profitable for you. Uh, can you read Sirach chapter 3, verse 30, please? Water would quench a flame and fire, and alms maketh an atonement for sins. Hopefully, this helps understand that it, for that alms to make an atonement, it also has to be with righteousness, not merely alms alone. And may the Lord be gracious to prosper Issachar and us all in these things. Remember, also, let those alms be along with walking in the spirit of charity, so that it may be profitable for you like it was for your father. Can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3 to 6, please? And I thought I bestowed all my goods to feed the poor. And, excuse me, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. We see that giving your goods to the poor without charity is to no profit. And now you have precept to understand why Paul was saying this. We just read what he saw in the depths of hell, seeing the punishment people get for giving alms with no charity. All right, continue, please. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Doeth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. There you see charity, she comes with other fruits of the Spirit by all the characteristics she uh, encompasses. Also, let your arms be seen in secret before the Lord and not men. Can you read Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 4, please? Take heed that you do not your arm before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Amen. There is a way Amen. of a, there is a way of uprightness and walking in rectitude. Issachar guided his children to the right path by his example as a believer in how he operated in his life. Can you read Testament Issachar chapter 3 verse 6 through 8? Please, let's continue on down. Read it. And my father always rejoiced in my rectitude, because I offered through the priest of Ahia all first fruits, then to my father also. And Ahia increased ten thousandfold his benefits in my hands. And also Jacob, my father, knew that Elohim aided my singleness, for on all the poor and oppressed, I bestowed the good things of the earth in the singleness of my heart. Issachar was righteous, very religious and devout in his worship of the Lord, and compassionate toward the poor in giving of the rewards of his labor. Today his children are still devout in religion. It's just not true religion, so you'll find they're devout in the religions of their stumblings, 
whether it be the idolatry they were in before colonization or predominantly Romanized Christianity religion they received when they were conquered. And the religions of that sort because they received they received them when they were conquered by Cortez. Sadly also they have gone away from the compassion towards the poor seen as though they are those very wealthy of the cartels and such while their neighbors are the poor struggling in their midst. Issachar desires his children to return unto singleness. Can you read Testament of Issachar chapter 4 verse 1 and continue from there please? And now hearken to me, my children, and walk in singleness of your heart. For I have seen it in all that is well pleasing to Ahia. The single minded man coveteth not gold. This was the important one. He's not a lover of money. You remember in Tobit, that precept said that, and it is better to give alms than to lay up gold. So he wasn't desirous for just having a bunch of money, but was a, a bountiful giver, and the Lord rewarded bountifully. Continue, please. He overreaches not his neighbor. He doesn't cross his neighbor for gain. Continue. He longeth not after manifold dainties. He's not desirous of manifold luxuries. Continue, please. He delighteth not in varied apparel. All right. He doeth not desire to live a long life, but only waiteth for the will of Elohim. This is the characteristics of the single-minded man. And their power, I'm sorry, and there is power from Malahayim in this mindset. Continue, please. There is no envy in his thoughts. No malicious person maketh his soul to pine away. The unrighteous deeds of another person doesn't agitate him because he doesn't censor other men's lives. He's focused on his own. Continue, please. Nor worry with insatiable desire in his mind. The single-minded man isn't insatiable in his mind, but Issachar's children struggle with it. Continue, please. For he walketh in singleness of soul, and behold of all things in a rightness of heart. Shunning eyes made evil through the error of the world, lest he, sh lest he should see the perversion of any of the commandments of Ahiah. That's what a single-minded man would do. Focus on keeping his eyes pure, that he may not see the perversion of any of the commandments. Hopefully this gives a good example of how one ought to operate for the children of Issachar and for all those who are called to walk in singleness. Singleness is an important admonition for not only Issachar, but a few of the other fathers instructed their children to walk in singleness. And let's see how that singleness, what power it has with Allah Hayim. Continue, please. And the spirits of deceit have no power against him. For he looketh not on the beauty of women, lest he should pollute his mind with corruption. Issachar didn't have a wanton eye. In his singleness, so his mind wouldn't be corrupted. Sadly, his children struggle with the wanton eyes for the beauty of women and think about pleasure with women in their minds. Hence, if you've been around some Mexicans, it's common that whenever a woman walks by, they stare or they make faces about her like, oh, like, look at that, or might whistle and things of that nature. It's not to say that they would actually act on the thought, but they take pleasure in looking and thinking about it. The best thing for you is to focus on your labor and good works and your job to keep you until you be given a wife as your father did. If you're already married, there are admonitions to help as well. Can you read Mandate 4, <laughs> chapter 1, verse 1, please? I charge thee, saith he, to keep purity and let not a thought enter into thy heart concerning another's wife. So don't think about a man's wife, all right? Or concerning fornication. You should not think about sleeping with an unmarried woman that you don't have an accord with to marry either because that would be fornication. It's not a sin to desire an unmarried woman for a wife, though, as Deuteronomy even shows. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 11 and 13, please? Deuteronomy 21 and 11. And seeth amongst the captives a beautiful woman, and hath a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Okay. 
Deuteronomy 21 and 13. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thine house, and bewail her father and mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her, and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. Now, just looking upon a woman with the thought of lusting after her, that's actually a problem. Can you read Matthew chapter 5, verse 28? Okay. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. A pure mind doesn't think like that. Can you read Benjamin, Testament of Benjamin, chapter 8, verse 2, please? He that hath a pure mind in love looketh not after a woman with a view to fornication, for he hath no defilement in his heart, because the spirit of Elohim resteth upon him. Seeing a beautiful person is not a sin nor is acknowledging the fact that a person is comely. So long as one doesn't let the thoughts go past that into thinking about them the wrong way. Continue, please. For as the sun is not defiled by shining on dung and myrrh, but rather drieth up both and driveth away the evil smell, so also the pure mind, though encompassed by the defilements of the earth, rather cleanseth them, and it's not itself defiled. There you see how having the light in us as the sun, we grow in purging our thoughts to see all things in pureness, so that the evil stench is driven away. And for us to understand that evil stench is similar to the evil spirits because they have a bad smell, according to the Apocalypse of Paul. Um, Lord willing, we get to do a lesson on overcoming fornication in the mind at a later time. And that will help for further edification on for that for everybody, because a lot of tribes and people have issues with fornication. Continuing in the admonitions of Hermas for a man that has a wife. Um, Hermas, Mandate 4, Chapter 1, Verse 1 to 3, please. I charge thee, saith he, to keep purity, and let not a thought enter into thine heart concerning another's wife, or concerning any such like evil deeds. Don't think about same kind relation, nor near kin relations either, listed in Leviticus chapter 18. Continue, please. For in doing so, excuse me, for in so doing, thou committest a great sin. But remember thine own wife always, and thou shalt never go wrong. Remember, holiness with contentment is great gain. So being content with your own wife in your thoughts will keep you from falling into fornication. Focusing on your labors within good works until Ahaya give you another wife, if he wills. Continue, please. For should this desire enter into thine heart, thou wilt go wrong. And should any other as evil as this, thou committest sin. For this desire in a servant of Elohim is a great sin. And if any man doeth this evil deed, he worketh out death for himself. Look to it, therefore, abstain from this desire. For where holiness dwelleth, there lawlessness ought not to enter into the heart of a righteous man. Hopefully this helps attain unto singleness as your father's desire. Can you jump back into Testament of Issachar, chapter 5, verse 1, please? Keep therefore, my children, the law of Elohim, and get singleness, and walk in godlessness, not playing the busybody with the business of your neighbor. Godlessness means free from guile, cunning, or deceit. Innocent, naive, simple. For help of understanding how, what that characteristic looks like and how we ought to be, and particularly Issachar, how you ought to be. Continue, please. But love Ahia and your neighbor. Those are the two greatest commandments. So your father wants you to keep the whole law. Continue, please. Have compassion on the poor and weak. And walk in the ways of the Lord, having compassion. These are essential for you to be delivered from your struggles. Go on. Continue, please. Bow down your back unto husbandry. And toil and labor in all manner of husbandry, offering gifts to Ahia with thanksgiving. For with the first fruits of the earth will Ahia bless you, 
even as he blessed all the saints, from Abel even unto now. For no other portion is given to you than of the fatness of the earth, whose fruits are raised by toil. For our father Jacob blessed me with blessings of the earth and of first fruits. You know from the Testament of Judah, chapter 24, verse 2, the earth has a lot of love for you and bless your father herself. This is why you all do so well in labor in the field. Your father wants you to focus on working hard in husbandry and giving tithes with thanksgiving. There is a blessing in it for you, especially. Continue in Testament of Issachar, chapter 5 and 7. And Levi and Judah were glorified by Ahiah, even among the sons of Jacob. For Ahiah gave them an inheritance, and to Levi he gave the priesthood, and to Judah the kingdom. And do ye therefore obey them, and walk in the singleness of your father? Singleness is the freedom from duplicity, or secondary and selfish ends. To be without hypocrisy, this is what you need to attain unto, brethren of Issachar. Notice, it's important for you to obey the two witnesses along with walking in the singleness of your father. Your father understood the end times and knew Judah and Levi's sons would be there to help the church gather her children. He also saw what Gad would do in the end. Continue, please. For unto Gad hath it been given to destroy the troops that are coming upon Israel. So don't worry about the troops that shall come upon Israel. In the end times, but just walk in singleness as your father and obey Judah and Levi. Everything else will be taken care of. It's amazing how your father gave you the simple mindset you ought to have with what's to come in these end times. Let's look at Issachar's commands to you, his children, since he knew what you would be struggling with in these last times. Can you go into the Testament of Issachar chapter 6, starting at verse 1, please? Know ye therefore, my children, that in the last times your sons will forsake singleness and will cleave unto insatiable desire, and leaving godlessness will draw near to malice, and forsaking the commandments of Ahiah, they will cleave unto Belier. They don't keep the commandments and cleave to these religions of Belier. Hence, sadly, you find them very devoted to the current religions of the world. Continue, please. And leave husbandry. They will follow after their own wicked devices, and they shall be dispersed among the Gentiles and shall serve their enemies. There is something that really helps you by working in husbandry, and evidently departing from it for your own devices has caused the downfall of your tribe. Today Issachar's children are in fact serving their enemies around the world for low wages as Jacob said they would be servants unto tribute. Your father is adamant about you doing husbandry. So I wouldn't quite say quit your day job, but evidently you need to start doing some gardening projects in your spare time to help you as your father instructs. Continue, please. And do you therefore give these commands to your children that if they sin, they may the more quickly return to the Lord, for he is merciful and will deliver them, even to bring them back into their land. You gotta keep these commands, brethren, and give them to your children to turn them unto repentance more quickly. Remember, the words of righteousness rehearsed daily avails much. Let's finish up getting your father's exhortation to you. Can you go into Testament of Issachar, chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, please? Behold, therefore, as ye see, I am 122 years old, and I'm not conscious of committing any sin except my wife i have not known any woman i never committed fornication by the uplifting of my eyes issachar's children struggle with wanton eyes looking upon women to lust after them in their minds and the lord strengthened them to overcome this continue please i drank not wine to be led astray thereby issachar's children struggle with drinking to the point of drunkenness to be led astray by the spirits that wine minister unto when they do drink, they are heavy drinkers. Hopefully, obeying Judah as your father instructs will help you. Can you read Testament of Judah chapter 13, verse 1 to 4, and verse 7 to 8, please? Testament of Judah chapter 13, verse 1. And now, my children, I say unto you, be not drunk with wine. For wine turneth the mind away from the truth, and inspires the passion of lust, and leadeth the eyes into error. For the spirit of fornication hath wine as a minister to give pleasure to the mind. 
For these two also take away the mind of man. For if a man drank wine to drunkenness, it disturbeth the mind with filthy thoughts leading to fornication, and heateth the body to carnal union. And if the occasion of the lust be present, he worketh the sin, and is not ashamed. Verse 7. For much discretion needeth the man who drinketh wine, my children. And herein is discretion in drinking wine. A man may drink so long as he preserveth modestly. But if he go beyond the, this limit, the spirit of deceit attacketh his mind, and then maketh the drunkard to talk filthily, and to transgress and not be ashamed, but even to glory in his shame, and to account himself honorable. That's a great admonition. Hopefully that helps. Let's go back into Issachar's testimony. Testament of Issachar, chapter 7, verse 3. And continue, please. I coveted not any desirable thing that was my neighbor's. Issachar's children struggle with coveting the desirable things of others. Continue, please. God arose not in my heart. A lie passed not through my lips. His children also struggle with guile in the heart and lying lips, which can lead them away from the simplicity of the singleness of heart. Continue, please. If any man were in distress, I join my sides with his, and I share my bread with the poor. Issachar was very sympathetic and compassionate towards others. I mean, that aided him in singleness and not censoring the lives of other people not being insensitive and indifferent. Continue, please. I wrought holiness. All my days I kept truth. I loved Ahia with all my strength. Likewise, also every man I love more than my children with all my heart. That's how we work holiness and keep the truth. Now we can all know when we are truly in the truth. Sadly, Issachar's children struggle with that compassion to love others as their own family. But these are things that your fathers show. I will help deliver you from Satan. Go ahead in verse 7, please. So do you also these things, my children, and every spirit of belly shall flee from you, and no deed of wicked men shall rule over you, and every wild beast shall ye subdue, since you have with you the Elohim of heaven and earth. And walk with men in singleness of heart. And having said these things, he commanded his sons that they should carry him up to Hebron and bury him there in the cave with his fathers. And he stretched out his feet and died at a good old age, with every limb sound and with strength unbated. He slept the eternal sleep. The singleness of heart. And rectitude of Issachar was an example of a believer before the preaching of the gospel. So the children of Issachar will be great examples for us when Christ is formed in them. Hopefully this lesson was edifying. And uh, for those of you who are of the tribe of Issachar, hopefully this helped you understand yourself better and understand where you come from and to know who you are to be in Christ Yachin by the example of your father. Uh, anything else, Zachwa? Uh, if I guess anyone watching this video, if these are things that are very relatable to you, um, and you were considered an Aboriginal of you know of your family's lineage in the respective part of um, Mexico, maybe some other places in South America where are scattered throughout the whole world. So it, it's not going to be just Mexico. I mean, I've been to Spain and I've seen Mexicans or his uh, or uh, his Hispanics in that nature. Um, I've been to different areas of the world and even even Egypt, I ran into some Mexicans. So it's not that those people are only in that area. We're trying to pinpoint a certain um, certain behaviors of those people of that tribe, although we've been scattered to the four corners of the earth. So whatever respective place you're in, if you are relatable to this, then nine times out of 10, you're from the tribe of Issachar. Right. Um, these are very distinct um, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, characteristics. 
characteristics. These are very distinct characteristics and they're not going to apply to every tribe of the nation of Israel. Neither are they gonna to apply to the Gentiles. So this isn't one of the tribes that you can get kind of confused, um, but there are certain things. If it pricks your heart, if it, if it resonates with you, this is probably your tribe. Or this is your tribe. I'm not gonna say probably. Safari is one of the easiest to identify. All right. It's pretty straight. It's pretty straight. Even, yes. So thank you for that. Praise the Lord. Thank you guys for your patience with us All today. Right. Uh, we know it took a while to get this lesson going, but praise the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. We prospered it. We got it done. Uh, check the comment section for any questions. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm currently in Egypt right now, and my, um, my internet setup isn't the greatest right now, so we had to make some alterations. Uh, go ahead, Brother Kalafo. You want to touch on the chat? Yeah. Desiree. Y'all think it's the natives? I never, I saw. Child of Sister Desiree. Yes. Peace be with you. I'm trying to see how, should I go through all the greetings or just do the questions first? Go say hello to everybody. Right, let's go Hi. down the list. Hey, Sister Desiree. Child, I'm sorry about that. Hanu, peace be with you. Shalom. Uh, Shalom, Brother Hanu. Peace. Brother Johnny. Johnny. Brother Johnny, peace. Shalom, shalom. Uh, Michael, hey, brother. Shalom, peace. Shalom, brother. And King of Progression. Shalom, shalom. Peace, brother. <laughs> Shout out to Shalom. All right. So back to Sister Desiree. Peace be with your sister. Uh, you, you had a comment. Y'all think it's the natives. I just saw a photo. I'm Native American searching my last name Sanchez, though. All right. Well, sister, you have a, we have a, a playlist called the 12 tribes. We suggest go through that playlist and watch the lessons for, for the tribes and uh, see which one you identify with according to the spiritual indicators. And Lord willing, you get to know exactly which tribe you come from. Hopefully that helps. All right. Let's see. I don't see any questions there. All right. The video was um, good. Technically, audio, hold on, Casa. There was something on, on Desiree that you didn't touch. Uh, technically, there's no way that anybody could be of multiple tribes. Um, every tribe goes through the lineage of your father. And your father has to be one of the tribes. He can't be a multiple, multiple tribes. Um, yeah. And that's just the way it works out. Um, they're going. Your father is going to be the tribe of his father. So it don't matter if your father has a mother who's a Gadite and your father the Judite. Um, whatever the father is, that's going to be the tribe of the children so that you can understand that there's no way that there's multiple tribes. Um, we don't go by the mother's lineage as the people in Israel do today because it's not biblical. Um, biblically, it goes to the father. You can look at Matthew chapter one. It literally recounts every father and it goes through the father's lineage and that's consistent throughout the scriptures. Yes. Facts. We have Brother Lamar. Praise Ahaya. Peace be with you, brother. Good to have you here. Thanks Lamar. Shout out to Charlie, brother. Right. Enjoys your background, Zach <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for catching that on Sister for Sister Desiree. I sure missed all that. Father Ed, apologize. Johnny said the audio was perfect. The video had a lag, but the audio was great. Praise the Lord. Something's better than nice. nothing. 
right. Uh, brother Michael, I'm in um, I'm in Alexandria right now. Uh, any questions in regard to the lessons, the lesson today, uh, brothers and sisters? And you do know, for those of you who are subscribed, the Tribe of God lesson just got reposted, got that cleaned up and fixed for the correct edification. And hopefully it's helpful for those of you here that may believe you come from the tribe of Gad or you may be of the tribe of Gad and don't know it. Hopefully that's nice and is good and helpful for you as well. Next we Love have you too, Brother Lamar. Yes, sir. Love you. Next we have the tribe of Levi coming up. That's going to be, that's going to take a while. Levi's testament is the longest one. And children of Levi, there's a lot to discuss. And hopefully, it's also helpful for others, helpful for others, just as Issachar was helpful for everyone today, because a lot of us can benefit from being a single mind. Not that. Well, uh, Brother Hanu. Even the, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah labors, but we don't labor on the level of Issachar. It's, it's totally different. They're, they they can stand in the heat all day, <laughs> like and be working in the field. I'm I'm pretty sure that it, it there's there's a distinct difference between the people in in your respective area. And the Issacharites, they're, they're on a whole nother level when it comes to labor. And a lot of times they do the job that we don't want to do. Growing up in America, those of us in America have been around Issachar. We know you can't outwork them. They just keep uh, going. Not in any way. Not in any kind of way. Anybody from America has worked with Issacharites? Please, you can write, you can attest to it. Like they, they are, they are not, they are not a joke. They get burned by grease and keep going. You won't even know it. They, it it's, it, it's a totally different thing. Like, Amazing, man. <laughs> they, Lamar said he knows something that works sixteen hours a day, and they just be going, just going. It's amazing, man. Elohim gave them that gift, and that's what it is. Can't, can't take it from them. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Brother Babakuya. We appreciate it. I hope you glorified. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the uh, Feast of uh, Trumpets as well. We had the new moon come in last week in the Feast of Trumpets. Hope that was enjoyable for everyone. We have an important day coming up, the Day of Atonement. Not forget that. We have the lesson mm -hmm. on shall we fast for scriptural understanding on whether we should fast or not. And uh, also in the playlist for Ahaya's Holy Feast in the seventh month, there's a video called the Day of Atonement Update. We suggest to watch it as well for all information concerning the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement will be next week on Tuesday. The date is, get my dates right here. The date is September 14th, is the day of the feast. The feast starts when the night comes on September 13th, that Monday night. Once night hits, that's the start of the Day of Atonement. And the feast lasts all the way until night comes on September 14th, that Tuesday. That's the complete day of the feast that we have to fast. All right? And please refer to the videos for edification on how that goes. Um, from what I've seen, Brother Hanu, the traits of Issachar, if it was on your mother's side, you wouldn't get any traits from it. Um, my children 
are Judah, and my my wife tribe is Levi, and my children do not pick up any trace of Levi. All of them pick up trace of Judah. And I guess it's just the spiritual implications. Some tribes do have similar struggles. What about you, Kassam? Some tribes can have similar struggles, but it stems from the father. Um, I'm a Levite, my wife's a Gadite. Both my children, they act just like me and my sister acted when we were kids. They're little Levites. <laughs> so right. it's, uh, it's straight. My, my mom's a Benjamite. I don't act like a Benjamite. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's simply what it is. <laughs> All right. My mom's a Gadite, and we're nothing similar. So, and, and even in common understanding of the world, people always say the apple don't fall far from the tree. You always hear folks tell a kid, you act just like your dad. Sometimes a kid never met his father a day in his life. But the spirit is there. The, the, the spirits know. We talked about in the beginning the lesson how it's the spirit that reveals all things. In the spirit realm, even the evil spirits know exactly what tribe you are, and they attend upon you according to your tribe. That's why you have these letters from your fathers for the respective tribes to know the things that will come after you, because they attacked your fathers, and your fathers overcame through their trial in their life. And before they passed on, they left you admonition to help you, so that you wouldn't be without understanding in what you're facing. Like You're welcome, Brother Hunter. It's, it's very essential. Like Even when we get into Levi, understanding how you're being attacked, it's going to help you so much to overcome. All right. With that, uh, for the brothers and sisters that, have we, that we commune with, we're looking forward to meeting with you all today fellowshipping in the members and the little members group. We'll be again with you all here shortly. And uh, for everyone else, hope this has been edifying and I be with you all. Peace, grace and peace be with you all in the name of the Lord Yache. And uh, with that we say chala kachala. What what time are we meeting? Uh time is right now here in the States. It's one oh nine say give it about 20 minutes say at 1 30. that's fine okay so about 20 minutes from now get with you all brothers and sisters all right shalom everyone